Hey everyone, welcome back. I am actually filming two videos in one day, so I'm going to be using the same colors I did with the last video. And sorry I can't show you that last video dried yet because it's still down there drying. So I will show you both of these to you on the next video, which will be in three weeks. I'll show you how they dried. Today's video is going to be a strainer flower spin. Because I just can't get enough of these spins. I'm looking at my petal because I want to see. Yeah, it's definitely coming this way. And with that, when you're doing the strainer flowers, you want to really make sure that you're level. I'm going to stick some sticks underneath here to try and get that more level. Let's see. It was going to drain the other way now. Yeah, it's going back the other way, so let's take one stick out. Okay, I think we're okay. Hopefully that doesn't wobble when I spin it. So let's give it a spin and spread that black out. Whoops. Did I mess up my camera? Sorry guys. I want to have it down closer for you so you can see when I do the strainer flower. All right, I'm going to add some more black. We don't have enough. This is a level three gallery wrap canvas. I sold my last spin flower that I did. So I wanted to make another one. And so this has deep sides. So I just want to make sure that we get it all, get it all covered. Uh, go ahead and touch up just a little bit, make sure these are all I love the deep sides with the flower spins because they, you really get some cool effects with them. And I'm telling you guys, if you haven't done this yet, the spin, oh my gosh, you have to get, it. you have to get a Lazy Susan and do a setup. It's really easy. Just get an old bowl that you're not using anymore. Attach it to your Lazy Susan so that it's up off the ground more. Uh, and buy a, a baby pool or something. You can even build your own cardboard box. As you can see, I don't know if you can see the sides of mine, but you really don't get a lot of uh, spin up above. It really does stay in the bottom. So you really could build, you know, like a cardboard box that's big enough and do it that way too. Jimmy rig it, figure it out, but it just takes, I, I just feel like it takes everything to a, another level because you don't have to do the tilting. All right, so the strainer I'm using is my typical strainer I always use. I get this at Walmart. It has the holes in the bottom and then it has the slits um, or holes in the sides. So it gives a little bit different shape flower than other strainers. Um, hopefully you can find it at your stores. Just, you know, I it took me a while to find a strainer I liked. And I found these over in the sponge area where the sponges are. All right, I'm going to use the same colors I used. I think I'm going to even start the same way I did with those. So I'm going to go copper first. Cover the bottom of your strainer. Let's go with some aqua. This is Artist Loft. The copper is Amsterdam copper. And then Artist Loft Aqua. I'm going to go in with some Deco Art 24 karat gold. And Cobalt, Metallic Cobalt Blue. They're spreading out pretty evenly, which is good. Go 
it's just going to fit. There you go. I want you to be able to see that coming out. All right. Let's put some of the Prussian blue in. And then let's go back with the copper. Aqua. Ooh, my container's getting full. I I think that Prussian blue was on the thick side, so it took its time coming out. It's coming out now. Pushing that other paint out. And you've got that cobalt that's coming out. Now the Prussian and the copper are coming out. Let's go in with a little bit more gold. And I want the gold in my center. So I think I'll probably take it off at this point. You always have to think about what's left in the middle is gonna be your, your dots, your flowers, center, your center of your flower. And that's why I like this strainer so much because the holes aren't tiny. They're bigger, and so when you remove it, it just gives you that really cool center for your flower. And the last one I swirled because I wasn't crazy about how the dots came out. Sometimes I just leave the dots. I'm trying to see if I have one on the wall where I left the dots. Uh, oh, I have this one. I'll show you real quick. I'm still working on this one. I have to get the leaves on it finished, but you can see... Oh, I left the dots there on that one. So if they come out good, then I leave them. It came out good on this one too. So these are all strainer, strainer flowers. This painting is still for sale, by the way, if anybody's interested. I will resin it too. It's on a really nice gallery wrap canvas. And I just have to add a few more leaves to it and then I, I'm going to be done. Okay, I'm going to... It still seems to be moving. A little bit so I'm going to turn my table. All right, let's take that off. Watch it bubble up, which is really cool. Let's give it a little bit of a torch. All right. Now just depending on how that does when it when I spin it, we'll see if I want to and remember all these colors look a little bit dull right now because they are metallic and they are wet and they've been mixed with mediums so once they dry they're a lot more clear and beautiful and I'm getting that veining that I got last time with my flower that's just the metallics there's no silicone in any of this and my paints are all mixed from my in, in my bottles. I just mix them with Floetrol uh, and Elmer's glue. Glue all. Make sure it's glue all. I uh, double the paint ratio, doubled with the glue all, or equal parts, I should say. And then I start adding Floetrol until I get the consistency that I want. I like a little bit thicker consistency. I don't like them really thin. If you get a thin color in here with thicker paints. It runs really weird so you want to make sure they're all on the thicker consistency not too thick but thicker all right I got some really cool cell stuff going on so let's give it a spin and see I'm just pushing my make sure my stick is back on there let's give it a spin and see what we get Bit off center but that's okay okay I only have one black corner so I'm gonna spin it back the other way and see if we can get rid of that black corner I don't want one black corner okay pretty love it 
I like that it's not perfect, not a perfect flower. You know, when you see them in nature and you, if you were to photograph a flower in nature, they're never, you know, dead center. Uh, they're always off a little bit somewhere. And that's, you know, nature and the wind and how it's growing and the angle and all that. So, yeah, that came out really pretty, though. I'm happy, happy with the sides. The sides look great. And I will, <laughs> I'm not going to give you the spiel until I'm done this time. So I will take you guys down for a close-up. I'm just going to give them another torch. So if we can get up some. I just love the veining that goes on with those metallics. Really cool. And I love how the center came out this time. I think once that gold sinks a little bit, more of that... The blues and aquas are going to come up through there, too. So let me uh, turn the camera off, and I'll bring you guys down for a close-up. Okay. Again, sorry about that halo light reflection. So there's that veining that I was talking about that happens with the metallics. I can't wait to show you guys these when they're dry. There's that cool center. Again, I'm going to leave it alone. I think that when it dries, it's going to be beautiful. There's that edge. There's that Prussian blue, and I have iridescent medium in that Prussian blue. And all of those uh, iridescents in there. Really pretty. Look at this cell over here. Isn't that cool? All right, guys. So there is your full view. And please like, share. Uh, subscribe most importantly if you haven't already if you have I really appreciate it and I will see you guys next week stay safe be happy and get some painting done talk to you later bye bye